And now we can look at a few mole relationships. So if you were talking about atoms of nitrogen and you had one mole of nitrogen, um, you would have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of nitrogen. If you had um, one mole of molecules of nitrogen and two, then you'd have the, the same number of molecules, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So because whenever you have a mole of anything, you have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 of those anythings. Units are important though. You have to know if you're talking about the atoms or if you're talking about molecules. So if you had one mole of um, one mole of nitrogen molecules, right, that's N2, you'd have twice as many nitrogen atoms because each one of the molecules has two atoms. So if I had, you know, and we'll do some conversions in the next um, in the next section when we look at that. We'll be able to convert from moles to atoms based on you know the chemical formula. Um, so let's do a couple of these. Uh, well, first, so one mole of atoms, ions, or molecules contains Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. A number of those particles, one mole of molecules or formula units, uh, contains Avogadro's number times the number of atoms. So that's really just saying if I had. Um, you know, two moles, just, let's do a little example, just a quick one. So if we had two moles of nitrogen, then I know in every one mole of nitrogen I have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. And then um, for every one molecule, I have two atoms. So I could just multiply all that through. And that will tell you how many you have. Now you had three mo three moles, and you could just start there. So we'll do a couple more of these conversions um, down here. So how many moles of sodium bicarbonate are in 508 grams of so sodium bicarbonate? So this is just a grams to moles conversion. So you need to figure out what the molar mass is. They're not asking you anything about molecules or atoms yet. Just you want to go from from grams to moles. So you're going to need to find the molar mass. So the very first thing you want to do is find molar mass. Um, and how do you do that? You look all the, the um, atomic masses up in the periodic table. So sodium, again, if you just go to periodic table, sodium over here, you can't see it. So it's not on the scale. There we go. Sodium is uh, 22.99. I'm just going to say that's 23. Um, we have carbon, we have oxygen, and hydrogen. We've used these all before. So we're just looking at those numbers. So sodium is 23. I have one of them. Hydrogen is 1.01. Carbon is 12.01. And oxygen, I have three of those and they're all 16. So when I, so three times 16, add all these up. You can do that. You can pause the video and check that. When you do that, you should get 84.02 as the molar mass and the units are grams per mole. Um, and so now I want to take 508 grams and I'm going to um, divide here by the molar mass. So I want my units to cancel. So if I have grams on top, I want grams on the bottom, grams per mole. Um, so now I'm just going to multiply, uh, take 508 and divide it by um, 84.02 and you should end up with 6.046, something like that, moles. That's what we're asking for. How many moles? That's what they're asking for. How many moles? So my grams would cancel here. Grams cancel, and you end up with moles. Now to get to the right number of sig figs, we have three sig figs in our measured quantity here. The molar mass is not going to determine how many um, significant figures you have. Right, just the measured quantity which is the 508, so we should have three sig figs, so let's round this to three sig figs, so that's 6.05 moles. And there you go. Um, if you want to know what is the mass in grams of, um, if we want to go the other way, what if we started off with moles and we want to get to grams? Molar mass is still the same, we still have sodium bicarbonate, that's what we had before. So we have our molar mass already, we're just starting here with moles. So if we start off with moles, we have 6.33 moles. And now I have uh, 84.02 grams for every one mole. You can multiply that through. I got five, 531.847. And let's go to three sig figs. So I got 
32 and my units are in grams, so my moles cancel there. Um, so if you're starting off with moles, have moles on the bottom. And molar mass is always lots of stuff. It's lots of grams per one mole. Molar mass is always per one mole. Um, so if you're starting off with moles, put moles on the bottom. If you're starting off with grams, put grams on the bottom. Now we can take it a little bit further. Um, what if they give us, uh, oh, sorry, not, not further. We just have a different example. Um, we have moles of sulfuric acid. So you have to take that name and figure out what the formula looks like and then calculate the molar mass. So it's an ic acid, right? So ic acids come from ic, right? Eight ic itis. So if you remember from chapter two, so sulfuric acid, all acids have a hydrogen in front of it. And this is coming from um, sulfate, which is SO4. It has a two minus, and this is a plus. So when you crisscross, you get H2SO4, right? Remember all those polyatomic ions. So H2SO4 is your um, molecule that you have to figure out the, the molar mass for. So if you want to pause for a second and figure that out, you can do that. So we have hydrogen, we have um, two hydrogens. So that's two times, and you should really be able to start doing this a lot faster. Sulfur, if you want to go back and check what sulfur is, and some of these you'll have them memorized. Hydrogen, oxygen, you'll use them a lot. Sulfur, you have 32.06. You only have one of them, 32.06. And you have four oxygens, oops, oxygen, 16. Awesome. So when you work all that out, you get 98.08. That's the first step, grams per mole. So once you know the molar mass, then you can just take the moles that are given. And for every 98.08, grams you have one mole so just multiply those together and when you do that you get 0 0.00294 and we only want two sig figs and so we can put that in scientific notation one two three so we end up with 2.9 times 10 to the negative three uh, grams sorry that's grams our moles cancel. We started with moles, we ended up with grams. And um, I dropped that four. I only want three sig fig or two sig figs. So since uh, the four is less than five, I, just, I can just keep it where it is. I don't have to round up. Okay, the next problem they're asking us about how many molecules do we have in a certain number of grams. So we don't have a direct conversion here, but we can go from grams to moles using molar mass and then moles to molecules using um, Avogadro's number. So yeah, and then we can take it even further and go from molecules to atoms using the chemical equation, chemical formula. Okay, so the first thing we do need, need to do is to calculate the molar mass. Um, so hydrogen is 1.01, .01, nitrogen is 14.01, and then you have three times 16 for oxygen. And again, you're finding all of those in the periodic table. You have your nitrogen, your oxygen, and your hydrogen. Um, and so when you work all that out, you get 63.02. And I'm doing this quickly uh, because you should pause and be able to do this on your own. So look at your, you're, again, you're just counting up the number of hydrogens, nitrogens, and oxygens. That's your molar mass. So now we'll start off with 4.0 to grams, and since grams are on the top here, we're gonna put grams on the bottom to get it to cancel. 63.02 grams per one mole. That will get us to moles, and then we know for every one mole, we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 uh, molecules. And that's how we can get to molecules. And when you work all that out, you end up with 4.02 one times 10 to the 22 molecules and there really should be a shorthand for the molecules um, but yeah look at that bridge right we're gonna go from grams to moles using molar mass moles to molecules using Avogadro's number 6.02 times 10 to the 23 and then if you wanted to go to atoms which we're gonna do down there you just need the chemical formula 
to help you get there. So here they want to know um, how many atoms of oxygen are in this sample. Well, if you look at this, we know how many uh, molecules we have, right? That's how many molecules. And for every one molecule, for every one uh, molecule of HNO3, we have three, hydrogen, uh, three oxygen atoms. So that's our conversion, right? For every one molecule, we have three atoms of oxygen. If we wanted to get to nitrogen, it would be one. If we wanted to get to hydrogen, it would be one. But oxygen, we have three. So all we have to do is basically take those molecules that we calculated in part A, 4.01 times 10 to the 23 molecules, and say for every one molecule of the HNO3, I have three atoms of oxygen. They just picked atoms of oxygen, you can do any of these. And you're just going to multiply that through and you end up with 1.20 times 10 to the 23 atoms of oxygen.